Oh, hello everyone. So um so today I'm going to continue my discussion on thunder. So this time it's going to be a different thing. So but before I start, um I will say remember on my last video concerning thunder accord, um I said uh the Honda engines are known to be durable, you know, generally. So um unfortunately I was wrong. Yeah, in the past it used to be, but not anymore. So because I did a little bit uh, diving and did some research, and I realized that not all the modern engines are like that anymore. So I'm taking back my words, and you know, so they are no longer known for what they used to be as uh, the most durable engines. Uh, so, so that's why I'm bringing this up. So um, anyway. Uh, this is my Guinness tabs. So, you see this engine you are looking at on the screen. My advice, if you are going for a Honda car, especially uh, an Accord, I know it's not only Honda Accord that uh, you can find this engine on, but I'm going for a Honda Accord produced from 2013 to 2017. If I were you, I would avoid this engine. Uh, I would I will explain the reasons for that. Okay, so this engine is known as uh, Earth Drive. No, Earth Dreams. Earth Dreams technology. Um, you can you will find it in like I mentioned earlier in most um Honda vehicles, not just on our court. So um, the Air Dreams uh, engine is not only this particular engine, they are very, in fact, I think uh, there are VCs that also have this, so, but this particular one is 2.4 liter engine. Um, I think it's, not, <coughs> it's known as um, K24W1, if I'm not mistaken. It's actually a K series engine. Uh, K24 series, so um, but this one is K24W1. So, um, there are quite a number of issues that I was able to find um, that owners experience or previous owners have experienced concerning this engine. In fact, I made it very notorious uh, in terms of issues. Um, so that's the reason why I say if you can <coughs> avoid this buying uh, a Honda car with this engine, you'll find it on ninth generation. That's what I mean by 2013 to 2017 Honda Accord. So you find it on Honda Accord ninth generation. Um especially this 2.4 liter engine. Now it's not on all Honda Accords that I find this 2.4 or K24W1. I think you'll find it mostly on U.S. Uh, specifications on that call U.S. spec, the yeah, ninth generation, 2013-2017. Other ninth generation uh, models, you know, you know, for other regional spec, like um, uh, Asia, some of the Asia, like China, others. I think they had like 2.0, uh, but in U.S. that generation. That night generation, they use 2.4 and 3.5 liter engines, which is this is for the 3.5. So, anyway, let's focus on the one I'm going to talk about, just this engine, which whichever model you find it. I'm not um, a Honda expert or specialist. Let me point it out again. I think I mentioned in the last video. I'm not a Honda specialist or an expert. So, uh, what I'm saying here, shouldn't take it uh, as a specialist perspective. However, um, number one, I'm a technician, an automobile technician, and also a specialist on a project plan. So I don't need to be an expert on Honda to be able to understand when other experts in various other models or Mark are uh, speaking concerning their, uh, you know, the technology in those bar or engines. So I'll be able to understand what they are talking about. From uh, aside uh, feedback from users 
or people have used this in Japan. Also, the expert in that particular brand, in this case Honda. So I now came to the conclusion that this engine, if possible, should be avoided. However, it doesn't mean um, there are no fix to some of the issues they are known for. One of them is, first understanding is this is a direct injection engine. Personally, I don't like direct injection engine. Even in Bojo, you have, you have these issues. The direct injection engine like the EPCC engine, I'm talking about THP, especially the early THP engines, um, VTI 120 uh, engine model. I mean, issues, issues. Um, so I uh, expect that this engine will have not necessarily similar issues, but something similar, you know, something like that. Uh, and for what I can understand, they are all having the same issue um, or something similar, actually. So the one thing that stands out on this one, which you can actually who said THP Pojo engines have the same issue is their timing chain tensioner, you know? The tensioner uses a chain. I mean, the, time, the engine is timing chain. So this 2.4 liter K24W1 engine uh, tends to rattle even at low mileage. People that have that issue even when they were less than 50,000 kilometers. Maybe if I'm US, I would say maybe like 50,000 miles or less or a little bit more. You start to rattle, start the car when the engine is cold. It starts sounding as if uh, uh, it's not necessarily diesel engine, it will just be before the sound now quietens. And, um, if uh, it, over time you start having uh, misfire issue, loss of power, and uh, when scan, you see stuff like um, you know a camshaft position unknown, or I don't know the exact words. You know when you, when, when scan uh, Honda VCUs, when the timing is off, what kind of uh, definition error definition to give? But I love like Pojo. What well, this kind of issue we see like cylinder reference sensor, uh, synchronization issue, uh, counter position sensor unknown. No, counter position unknown. It's no stuff like that. That will tell you something is already wrong. So the timing chain tensioner on this engine uh, is very fragile. I'm talking about even the OEM, the, the ones that the engine, in these engines we are producing, very fragile. I mean, for what I could understand, remember is um, what's with the engine oil, so they don't last. So you find people keep changing them over and over and over. You buy a new one, put today, you probably know it, the same sound comes back. Buy another one, put today, the same sound. And like I said, if you don't, if you leave it and ignore it, what will eventually happen in the time the chain will drop, and it care is not taking it to damage a lot of things. You don't want your timing uh, chain to slip off <laughs> when the engine is running, to slip off for these clockers. You don't want that. Timing belt, even if you slip off or crack or break, yeah, worst case scenario, your valve, cylinder head valve. But then the timing chain, wow. Anything, most times, not say all the time, most times, anything around it, you just break everything. Remember, it's a chain. So, um, so that's one of their major weaknesses. So it, let's assume uh, I just have to, because for example, um, if you must be that uh, ninth generation Honda Accord from US market, I mean, and you don't want a V6. I think I'll do a separate video of the V6. You don't want a V6. You don't have any other option than with this engine. If you want, you just, that's the only option. You, as in, unless you don't want to buy nine generation from that court from US market, it must be it must be this engine or the VCs. So what that means is you have to you will be having that issue constantly. And if you are not the type that listening attentively or tend to ignore things until it breaks completely. You now some people, as long as the car could still start and move, they don't care until eventually it stop 
one is or strand them on the road. That's when they will now go and eat. In that case, you might end up losing the engine. So, uh, but let's assume I really want to. I just have to. What I will do if I were you, I will replace that uh, once that noise starts, once you notice it started to rattle, I will replace the tension up and not with OEM. One bother with the OEM. Look for aftermarket brand. Just look for any brand that you know, you know, brand uh, produces high quality timing kit. It doesn't matter whether it's uh, they produce timing kit or uh, timing bells or chain. But just know, you know, there are brands like Deco, Bosch, Gates. Uh, I don't know the OEM, but the brand in the OEM for um, the Honda as this engine. Will be any of these ones I mentioned, but like I said, I will avoid the OEM. Look for another brand, a, a high quality a brand that is known for high quality timing kit products. Look for that, put it. Maybe the, those ones probably will have a better design one than the OEM. Or it's possible that uh, at some point, because this engine, the, I remember it lasted up to 2013 to 2017. So maybe at some point, Honda started using a different brand in their OEM pack. As in, started packaging a different brand from the uh, the one they use when they produce engine to sell, you know, uh, for people that were buying. But it was a known issue. Uh, so, guys, like I said, if you don't take care of that, it will damage your engine. So, um, like expect this becomes like. Something you change every now and then. Uh, that because this is a direct engine, the another issue I have with this, see, it has it's a direct injection engine. Some, for example, for Pojo cars, VTI 120 uh EFCS engine, it does not have high high pressure fuel pump. Does it? Even though it's naturally aspirated. This one is also a natural aspirated, it does not have high pressure fuel pump. But this Probably because to boost the power, I don't know. So they introduce high pressure fuel pump on this engine, even though it's naturally aspirated. So what now happens is just like the one uh, TSP engine that fails, Kojo users uh, experience failure every now and then. They also experience it on this engine. So you have to deal with that headache of high pressure fuel pump failure. We it as we call it a HFPF. HPFP, high pressure fuel pump. Yeah, HPFP. So this car will have two fuel pumps. I don't need to check the car uh, injection system to know. I know as long as injection, uh, it has that high pressure fuel pump. It means there will be two fuel pumps on the vehicle. The primary fuel pump will be inside the tank, and this one is uh, kind of mechanical. There with some electrical control on the pump which should be ported on the cylinder head to be controlled by uh the the camshaft could be the intake or the exhaust camshaft depending on the design of the engine so once that fails uh, um, it doesn't matter how good the primary pump or the intake pump in the fuel tank is as long as that one the high pressure the hpfp is bad the engine here it might start but then it will be giving all kinds of issues, misfire sometimes, loss of power, high excessive fuel consumption. You just will not enjoy the car. Though when you scan the vehicle, the engine will see you. It will tell you P0087. That's the usual error code when this fails. However, the intake, in tank, or the primary fuel pump will also give you the same fault. You know, uh, P0087 when it's faulty. You know, because. Um, what is actually giving it that fault is the fuel pressure sensor that is mounted on the fuel rail. So uh, that sensor is just my once the fuel job drops less than expected. Doesn't matter whether it's the intake pump or the primary pump that is the cause or the high pressure pump that is the cause. It will give it the same error code. So it's now up for you to find out which one. Um, I don't know how. Uh, the ECU of this engine or Honda engine is for Pojo, you can tell which one that is causing it, or you can use uh, um, 
Just enough where pressure tends start to check the intact pump to know how good it is. If it's that one is good enough, then you know for sure this is the caused by high pressure pump. Or maybe Honda, uh, they have a system whereby it can tell you which one that is causing it. You know. But I actually did my research on this engine. Uh, Honda called with this engine and found uh, some of the people that have had that issue when they scanned the vehicle was showing P0087, which is the same thing for your guys uh, to do. And we want with EPC engine. So I expect um, people that drive TAP engine in project cars, they will tell you it's not always. Uh, <laughs> The, most of them most likely will prefer the natural aspirated engines than having to deal with this high pressure platform. Okay, so that's one of the issues about this engine, which if probably you'll be using the older Honda engines. So let's assume you are using Pojo cars, maybe the Pojo cars with EW engines that were produced in the 2000 to 2010, you know. And you now switch to this, you probably will wish you you, you have stayed back on your Pojo car or you didn't bother about Honda at all. You know, so um yeah, high pressure pump can be a big a big turn off, even to somebody like me. But then I mean if the car was a turbocharged engine and produces more power, you could say, okay, fine, I can deal with it concerning what I gain from it. But this one is just normal. Yeah, it has some power, uh, about 180 horsepower, there are about then 245 newton meter. You know, so, um, but that really what it. Anyway, um, but I think the next issue that um, I would advise you stay away from this, if you can, is the oil consumption issue. That's the one that almost every user, I'm not saying oil, Almost every user of this engine have experienced and or are experiencing. Likewise, TSP engines, which are also direct injection engines, they are uh, not even TSP, even the EPC, uh, VTI 120 engine in Pojo cars, 5.8, name them. They all have this oil consumption issue. But it appears this one even consumes much more than those ones in THP or uh, VTR, generally EPC engine. This 2.4 liter K24W1 engine in uh, Honda Accord, the ninth generation, they burn oil like hell. Um, I don't know, it could be the, because I recommended oil, which is LW20. I mean, that's very thin oil. Because most people that are have, having this issue, even especially when the engines or vehicle were basically still new. There was one I was reading. It was more like an article. He said the car was still less than 5,000 kilometers, 5,000 miles from new. Less than 5,000 miles from new. The oil has already gone down. As in brand new, not uh, didn't purchase the car used. They yeah, started so burning oil already. Well, I won't call it uh, okay. Oil consumption. Let's just say oil consumption because um, uh, none of them actually claim that uh, it was uh, the, their vehicles were emitting blue smoke. Why this thing was uh, the oil was short in the we were having oil shortage issue, so it was just consuming oil for no good, good reason. So. Now, a lot of people try to, uh, because I watched some even videos and uh, read some posts, check, went to some, um, what's it called, forums and the rest concerning Panda users and the rest. They were all saying uh, it could be this, it could be that, it could nobody. Some have even gone to, uh, took those, their cars to Honda when they were under warranty. No solution was given. Or at least solution that actually solved the problem. For example, some said uh, that it could be the PCV valve. Now, this, this is the PCV valve on the this engine. This Earth Dreams uh, K24W1 engine. This thing with red uh, color. 
uh, if you it's actually very easy to remove. So for this engine, you can remove it, put it another way. It just looks like ignition coil. For example, ignition coil on the K, no, not K, on the J35Y2 or Y1 engine. That's the V6 engine on this ninth generation under accord. Yeah, it looks like that kind of coil. You know? It has that uh, pencil shape. So, um, or like Pojo cars, it looks like uh, ignition coil that you find on THP or VTI engine or EPC engines. Likewise, um, this is ES9J4S or ES9 uh, V6 engines in Pojo vehicles, the four six four seven and the rest. So, which means you can easily remove it and plug another one comp comp compared to the EPC engines. Uh, yes, engines in Pojo cars, uh, EW engines, we are the uh, cylinder head covers are actually uh, the PCV valves. As in the PCV valves are integrated inside the cylinder head cover. So, changing the most size, you have to change the, uh, this entire cylinder head uh, cover depending on the engine design, you know. Um, so, this one is much easier to replace. However, for what they, uh, I got that people were really just using it to, I don't know, it didn't solve the problem. Most people change it, no, you know, there was no issue, meaning that their PCV valves were not bad, that they were changing, thinking to solve the problem. So it didn't, because, yeah, PC, a faulty PCV valve or a weak PCV valve tend to make the engine consume more oil. But in this case, it wasn't necessarily the cost of those oil consumption. <coughs> so, but if you ask me, I would say, based on my experience with diet injection engine that are on Pojo cars, I would say, um, if I were to use that experience, I would say I would kind of suspect the valve stem cells as the cause. But I was surprised that almost, I could say 90% of complaints I saw, uh, I read, watched, um, uh, you know, I uh, had people co about, complain about this engine oil consumption. Nobody actually talked about the vast services. They were all wasting their time changing this, changing this uh, PCV file. Nobody even could spare because that injection engine, for example, in Pojo, that's what, in fact, once your oil, apart from the turbocharged engine, whereby the turbo can fail and start to burn oil, which will increase oil consumption. So, most of, almost 95% of the time, on EPC engine on Pojo cars, the cause of the high oil consumption is the valve stem cells. I'm telling you, as somebody who have done Repairs on this engine, I can't. I can't remember how many times. I can't. I can't. I can't imagine start to count them. And all the oil burn and everything, most times will end up being the valves themselves. So it's as if a uh, Honda user don't really know much about direct injection engine. So the valves themselves, if probably is the same design with the EPC engine, Pojo engine. Yeah. It doesn't matter the quality of the sales, they will always be failing. That's why I say, when it comes to diet injection engine, I honestly don't like that design. I understand the reason why they make it, they make the engine to be more efficient, maybe in terms of fuel consumption, and make it more powerful. Uh, you know, more powerful than the engine size, you could put it that way. So, uh, most likely that was why they made this engine, uh, diet injection, instead of pot injection. So, um, so that uh, valve stem cell, what that means is you have to, every time it fails, it start burning oil. But then make, it, it doesn't make sense that a car that is still less than 5,000 kilometers, the valve stem cell, stem cell is supposed to have failed. It, it makes no sense. This is a brand new engine. So what if it's not actually the same, those stem, uh, valve stem cells? You know, so other people were also looking at uh, this, uh, the rings, the pistons, the rings. Could it be the reason? 
It was not everybody experiences when they first bought, bought the car. It was over time, maybe less than 50,000 kilometers, it started burning oil. It started consuming oil like hell. Some will say they will put um, maybe a liter or two liters before you drive a few kilometers. It's almost at the bottom. In fact, a lot of users lost their engine because as they were driving the engine, they didn't even know oil dried up completely. Before they saw the one, it was too late. Remember, it's a W20, it's very thin. So it will much faster, it will, it will, it oil will seep into the combustion chamber much faster than the thicker oil. So, so we are suspecting that it's because uh, they introduced this design to reduce uh, fuel consumption. So they made the, uh, these pack rings. There's a, one type of uh, this in the part of the ring that is uh, on, the, on, the, on the layer. You know, the first you have this uh, opening is like a ring. Then the second opening, then the last one. So that pack there. Uh, helps to prevent oil from seeping into the combustion chamber. So um, it seems as if this one uh, has a low, uh, it's not, I would call it low quality. Based on design, they made it not to be too harsh so that the person shouldn't struggle as it's going to uh, go to TDC and BDC so that the uh, engine will be less uh, strained will be more free to reduce consumption. So in that case, it burns oil. So these are one of the theories. So in that case, if truly the issue is coming from the rings, then it means there is no solution because the rings are already designed, even when they were new, already burned. Unless you want to tell me that the rings doesn't last a thousand kilometers. Now when they are, they only last for maybe a thousand or two and they will fail. So what do you not do? You keep changing your rings. This is, Dismantle your engine every 2,000 kilometers so that you stop burning oil. Or less probably by now, maybe they'll be able to figure out a different uh, aftermarket range that are not OEM that can actually last longer. Yeah. So it, it, that, that, that's one of the things. Uh, there are other people that claimed, other uh, past users. I claim that uh, what they did or how they were able to solve this was they switched from ZW30 to something a little bit thicker. Some even said they switched from the recommended ZW20. No, I mean ZW20, not ZW30. They switched from the recommended ZW20 by Honda to a different ZW20, probably the, those extended uh, one or performance ZW20 synthetic. Um, they're a little bit thicker. Uh, then some claim they switched from ZW20 to ZW30 and it made a difference. So I claim they switched from ZW20 to 5W30 or uh, ZW40 and there was a difference. Why? There was one that said that it will switch from ZW20 to 5W40. That was when the oil consumption reduced, not that necessary dropped completely. But then the, the, the another theory now concerning this is if the engine was designed to work better with ZW20, which is the recommended oil by Honda, it means the thick, when you increase the thickness of the oil, is it will wear out the engine. Faster, not just about uh, the pasting the rings anymore. The car, you know, the crank journal, the this, the bearings, the you know, so the camshaft, every other part of the engine that works with the oil. So, in other words, yeah, you might reduce the shortage, but then you could end up damaging the engine for it as in entirely, not just the pasting and rings. So, but no one has come back to say, okay, I use this for a long while and nothing happened. Some say, in fact, there are also people that say they even increase from 0W20 to 5W30 or 5W20, still no difference. Oil consumption remains the same. So, I mean, this oil consumption is like the, <laughs> the most important issue on this engine that drives people to crazy. 
So, maybe in your case, I, I, like I said, if I were to um, buy this, uh, let's assume, even though I have no interest at all on crossing that into like this. I mean, if it is as for some reasons, I have, I, so whatever you say, I have the car. Based on what I, my knowledge I have of, from the Pojo brand, I will first deal with the, the valve stem cells. And then, of course, the PCV valve is very easy to change. And for what I could tell online, it's not even expensive. So I bet I will have to remove my cylinder head. It's not funny, but I may have to do it. Remove the cylinder head, change it, change this valve, change the valve stem cells. If the consumption continues, I don't know how bad it might sound, but it might make sense then to. It, it, the thing, if I can't get, okay, let me put it this way. If it continues, and there's no other rings in the market aside OEM, I mean high quality rings aside OEM, like, or if other rings are almost the same design, even if the other high quality rings for this engine, but they are basically the same thing with the OEM. There's no point. I mean, I, I won't, there's no point in moving to the pistons to change the rings. Or even to change the pistons themselves as well. I mean, what's the point? I mean, like I said, if it's going to last me only 5,000 kilometers, you want me to every time I have to dismantle my engine for this. So in that case, it will not make sense, maybe, to increase the thickness of the oil. If it's not, it's recommended. But that what it now means is, okay, means this engine, the lifespan will be shortened. At least, even if I have to use the car for like five years, which if it eventually becomes weak and packs up, maybe I look for another one and keep increasing the thickness. In other words, I'm choosing between two devils. To reduce the oil consumption, kill the engine over time, but at least I get to use the car without worrying so much about the oil drying up while I'm in motion. So that uh, even if I have to keep buying engine over and over every two, three, five years, as long as uh, if the car doesn't stand me on the road by, you know, so. Now you understand why I say if you can avoid this engine. All these things I'm saying, yeah, there are fees, but is it really worth it? Because the people, the reason why people buy this, they instead of VCs is because of poor economy. So when you look at all this, the VCs is, it has its own issues, but nothing compared to this, nothing compared to this engine. In fact, the issue is even the issue the VCs is has, which is one of them. I'm going to do a different video. It can, it's, it's just a small fix to deactivate the VM, V uh, variable management, uh, variable capture management system. Ah, forgetting it. You know, there's a system that manages the, the cylinders. So, uh, that's especially for the automatics, the one with automatic transmission. So, it shut down some cylinders, three, about three cylinders. Honestly, that thing doesn't make sense. I mean, the thing is, people do these days just to reduce fuel consumption. It makes no sense. It creates even more problems on the vehicle. The one that doesn't have that uh, VCM, is it VCM or VMC? Doesn't have that management system, doesn't have issues at all, at least. No issues like this. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. If I were you, I would avoid um, uh, any. So, uh, Honda Accord produced 2013 to 2014 with 2.4 liter engine. So, in other words, if you live like place here in Nigeria where they ship cars from US for this Japanese vehicle, so within those years, if you can avoid these four cylinder engines, go for the VCs. If you must be the four cylinder, at least you know what you need to do, you, you, you have to deal with. If you're okay with that, fine. For me, I, I will tell you this. If the car actually has power, I know, you know, because I can go through some stress to own a car, but as long as at least let it worth it. Let it be that not just necessarily that you just have this normal power like every other car. Then what's the point? There's nothing special about it then. 
He said the first thing to say, oh, because the car looks very good and the rest I like that. Then there's another engine you can buy in that same car. There's that same model, that same one that has a different engine you can have without having all these issues. Except that you have to spend a little bit more on fueling the car. So you have to choose which one is more important. However, I would say not everybody or now will have must have experienced this. I mean, Nigeria is where people use 20W50, almost even brand new vehicles. 20W50 or Tigna. So people who are in Nigeria watching this may not really understand. Because they'll be like, no, this car engine doesn't consume oil. What do you mean? I've never had a reason to top it up. You are wanting grease inside the engine. So how do you expect the grease to burn? <laughs> you know, so if uh, I'm talking about people that actually go with the manufacturer's recommendation in terms of oil, but yeah, those are people that will have that um, issue. Uh, but then, thicker oil will also create issues for engine made to run with thick, thin oil. Um, but at least, if, it doesn't matter which oil you use, the, the time intentional failure will be there. Irrespective of oil. In fact, the thicker oil will really make it uh, wear out faster. But the only solution to that is uh, at least you have the option to buy OEM or try a different brand, maybe that is better than the OEM. Personally, if you live in like, somewhere in Nigeria, I don't, because this, most especially people that live in Nigeria that buy this car mostly used, avoid buying used timing chain tensioner for this engine because I know if I say, Bet me, almost, if not 80% of users of this engine in Nigeria, they are buying used tension. At least I thought they know this tension that is causing that failure. So go and buy user. Knowing that the, the used one is the OEM. And the OEM is the fragile one. So why buy something you know that is not even good? Maybe it's already uh, the last part remaining at 500 kilometers or less before the issue will start out. So why buy? You don't have to even buy a new one. At least let's save you for some 5,000 kilometers, 10,000, 20,000 or more before the issue starts up. But if I were you, I would look for a, 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 a non OEM. As long as you know the brand is good, as the, as the, the higher quality they say. That might even be a better. But sometimes, yeah, there will be some issues. I will use project engine, for example, V6 engine. Uh, ES9, uh, ES9 J4, the ignition coil they were producing were nonsense as a crop from new. The ignition coil they were not, they don't last, giving issues every now and then. But when you now buy the aftermarket, which is the tail you can put, it solves that for good, almost for good. You can use the car for years, hundreds of thousands of kilometers without having any need to touch your ignition coil. But the one the car were producing with new, I mean, every now and then we are dealing with ignition coil issues. So like my point is not always because like something is OEM means it's better. The aftermarket that actually serve you better than OEM. So if I were you, I'll buy the OEM uh, time chain tensioner than the no, I'll buy the aftermarket, not OEM, I'll buy the aftermarket time to chain tensioner, new one than use one or the OEM. Unless maybe the OEM founder called Tensioner, they change the brand now. But if it's the same brand, I will avoid it. Even if they've improved on it, I'll say avoid it. So it's the same brand that they produce the engine with, so I'll just avoid it. You know, so uh, the high pressure of weapon, well, I don't know, maybe it can, this one, maybe it can be fixed without replacement. Who knows? The project one, yeah, they also do fix it. So in that case, you don't need to spend much. But at least you know that issue is there. So um, I'm, I'm just advising, avoid if you can, or deal with it as the issue come up, if it comes up. All right. Uh, I don't think um, I have any other thing to say on this. I just don't like uh, that injection engine. Even if it has to be, let, me, let it be something you benefit a lot from the engine. I mean, it has the average power. What's the point? Um, yeah, some people are okay with it. Some people, where economy is the only reason they are buying cars. That's what I mean. It's the primary concern for choosing a car to buy. That's what many people do. Right? 
which is what led to all this nonsense we are now experiencing in modern cars or newer cars. Honda engines were known to be bulletproof, but now, I mean, I'm surprised that even Pojo engine even the in fact, don't put it in a different way. The 508 even tends to be better in option than what I read about this engine. Telling you, 508, I mean W2 produced at that time. It makes more sense to buy it than this. Those, the only thing you could say, those ones are to be charged, so you also have to suffer some issues that come with to be charged engine. This one.